let's start with the first uh, speaker of the um, of the session uh, today's session uh, and uh, it is my pleasure to to introduce you my my colleague uh, manuel martinez corral from the uh, 3d imaging and display laboratory uh, at the university of uh, valencia uh, the title of the talk will be dark field imaging through fourier light field microscopy that will be related with the uh, light field microscopy, but applied to face um, objects. So, Manolo. Okay, thank you very much, Genaro. So I'm trying to, to share my screen. Screen. Uh, I think I'm, I'm, I'm sharing it. Okay. It's okay? Excellent. So, Okay, this is the title of, of my presentation, Dark Field Imaging Through Fourier Light Field Microscopy. Uh, you can see that only my name is here. In fact, when I, what I'm going to talk about is something that is the result of the work of, of many people. Um, this is the, our group, uh, the 3D Imaging and Display Laboratory. So let me, let me start by emphasizing that in the way to, to build or to develop um, the light field microscopy, there were some important milestones. I simply will, uh, will comment uh, four of them. So for example, at the beginning, uh, the most, the, it, it, it was the, the first uh, demonstration of the first description of integral microscopy, which was, which was made by Nobel awarded uh, Liebman in 1908. Later in 1988, after 80 years, uh, McCormick and, and, and Davis and Jan, they uh, reported the first integral photography uh, monocular camera. So after 20 years, uh, Leboy et al, the, this group uh, from, from Stanford, uh, they proposed the light field microscope, which was based in this uh, integral photography camera. So, after, uh, and uh, after 10 years, uh, our group proposed the Fourier integral or light field microscope, which uh, we think that it's a good advance over the technique. So let me, let me start by showing the scheme of a conventional microscope in order to, okay, to uh, allow you to recognize uh, the elements of a, of a conventional microscope. So a conventional microscope basically is composed by a microscope objective, a tube lens, and the sensor, the CCD. Um, the CCD is conjugated with the object plane and where it is projected a greatly magnified image. But the most important in microscopy is not magnification. The most important in microscopy is resolution. And the resolution depends mainly, yeah, really mainly, on the numerical, uh, numerical aperture of the objective. So the resolution limit of a conventional microscope is given by this formula, and the depth of field is given by this formula. In this uh, rapid example, for example, in a microscope with numerical aperture 0 0.4, it's, it's modest, the resolution limit is 0 0.75 micron. But the problem of this uh, conventional microscope is that it is not designed for providing three-dimensional images. So in fact, three-dimensional information is lost uh, because the pixels are integrating, uh, the pixel of the sensor are integrating all the, uh, all the angular information. To solve this problem and based in the Lippmann concept, uh, Livoy proposed the light field microscope. Uh, this light field microscope was based in the insert, in inserting a uh, micro lens array just at the image plane and displacing the uh, sensor uh, up to the focal, back focal plane of the micro lenses. And okay, in this way, a collection of uh, micro images of the object are obtained. So in order to avoid uh, some comments now about this geometry, in order to avoid the overlapping of uh, micro images, it is very important. It's key, uh, the numerical aperture matching. It means that the numerical aperture of the objective 
as evaluated at the image space must be the same as the numerical aperture of the microlenses. Second, in order to avoid uh, the conflict between uh, the wave nature of light and ray optics, um, the pitch of the, of the microlenses should be at least five times bigger than the um, radius of the airy disk, but evaluated in this plane. Then in this case, there is no problem with uh, diffraction. And then the spatial resolution is determined not by diffraction, but by the pitch of the micro array. So here I show you one uh, realistic example we realize in, in, in our laboratory. Then uh, this is, uh, for example, one micro array. Uh, the first issue is that uh, with this microscope objective, uh, we obtain a good numerical aperture matching. And you can see that the main problem is that with, with this matching and with this geometry, um, the resolution limit provided by, the, by this microscope is much worse than the resolution limit provided by the, by the original microscope. There is a resolution loss factor of uh, about 10. And this is the best result that can be obtained with this uh, kind of microscope. I'm here, I'm showing you um, one, uh, one example of, uh, of results obtained in our lab. Uh, we use as the, as the, of the object some, uh, some, uh, some tissue. And we can see here, this is the collection of micro images. It seems to be a two-dimensional image, but in fact, it's a three-dimensional image because within any micro image, there is a lot of angular information. Any pixel within the micro image is having angular information. And from this three, from this three dimensional information codified in a two dimensional picture, we can obtain a lot of, a lot of information. This is for example, we can uh, calculate many uh, perspective images. In fact, here I'm showing only the perspective images in the horizontal direction. There are much many. Or from them, we can calculate uh, the depth reconstruction. <clears throat> Thus, um, light field microscopy is a is a yeah, is a potent, a very a very powerful, very powerful tool because it, it provides us three dimensional information after a single shot. So I can make a summary of uh, light film features. So it permits the capture after a single shot of the spatial angular information of rays emitted by the by the 3D specimen. This has a problem is the lack of flexibility due to numerical aperture matching requirement. It means, in other words, that every microscope objective matches only one microlens array. Um, it has poor spatial resolution. So uh, we have found that resolution loss smaller than 10 is uh, are very difficult to obtain and at the cost of losing much parallax. Another problem is the inhomogeneous lateral resolution of depth refocusing. Every refocused plane has a different resolution and low number of refocusing planes. You can see that these this last three drawbacks can be partially overcame by computational methods. But don't forget that computational methods never can recover an information that has not been captured. Thus, uh, the research of other optical implementation of this uh, light field concept uh, was a matter of, of great interest. In this sense, uh, four years ago, our group proposed the Fourier uh, Integral Microscope. Uh, I think that now is more popular the name Fourier Light Field Microscope. So it was a change of paradigm in the sense that um, now the microlens array is not set at the image plane, but at the aperture stop plane, or in a conjugated plane. So, and in this geometry, uh, there are other conjugations that are important. So object plane must be conjugated with the field stop, which must be conjugated with the CCD. So we have conjugation uh, between uh, aperture stop and microlenses and um, between object plane and CCD and field stop. In this way, as we can see here, 
uh, we can obtain directly a set of orthographic images with no additional computation processing. And every, uh, every of each of these image, which we call elemental images, cover a large default field. And then at the region of interest, the system is linear and shift invariant. And this will permit to define a single point spread function for the whole object. And, and therefore, the application of deconvolution procedures is trivial in this case. And about the resolution of the images, the resolution of the image is determined by n. n is the number of microlenses that we can fit within the aperture stop. In this example, is five. So resolution of images provided by a Fourier integral microscope is the resolution of original microscope divided by n. So we can obtain a resolution loss factor even about three compared with the resolution factor of 10 in a light field microscopy. So here I have, I have, I have drawn some, some uh, equations in order to compare the native microscope, the light field microscope, and the Fourier integral microscope in terms of a resolution limit and the foot field. Uh, and if we use uh, this uh, numbers, typical number mu equal to five, and n equal to four, which is uh, which are were good numbers, then we find that the uh, Fourier light field microscope have has much better performance than the conventional light field microscope, both in terms of resolution, in terms of depth of field, and in also in terms of computation time, because we obtain directly the images without uh, additional preprocessing. So this is an, uh, a single single skin of our of our microscope and in, in, in the laboratory. In fact, at the end of the at the end of the of the evening, you will be able, we will show you how to build this microscope in, in, in our lab in the in the workshop uh, community workshop number four. Um, here I show you some some results obtained of uh, of uh, cotton fiber. So this is our microscope. These are the seven elemental images obtained directly from this, uh, from this object. And uh, in fact, here we have a lot of 3D information. So we have here uh, seven perspectives. So in this, in, this, in this movie, I'm showing you these seven perspectives. You can see that, uh, that even the occlusions are solved through the, the fact that we have many uh, orthographic views of the object. And from here we can uh, we can make the reconstruction at will at the at the at the plane we want. Of course, uh, this microscope can be applied not only for static samples but also for uh, dynamic samples. So you, we can record in time uh, the seven different views of a dynamic uh, sample. From for from any of the frames here, from from any of the plane of the frames, we can uh, we can see that we have seven different perspectives, and from them we calculate this uh, reconstruction. So we can capture dynamically many views of the object, and we can calculate the three D uh, reconstruction or the three D depth map. Uh, of dynamic samples. Um, this is a, a result we obtained later in which we applied um, we applied uh, deconvolution tools uh, with uh, synthetic uh, point spread function. So this is the result of the conventional reconstruction algorithm. And this is the result of applying our algorithm. So we are providing optical sectioning uh, to, this, uh, to this microscopy process. And we can see here that even we can obtain a good resolution uh, depth map of the, of the sample. Uh, let me say that in fact, this algorithm is useful uh, mainly in case of fluorescence in which we have a bright si signal over a very dark uh, background. Or even later, uh, we developed 
a new algorithm for reconstruction. We call it we call it shift and multiply algorithm, which provided us a much better um, optical sectioning and much faster optical sectioning. So here we are comparing for uh, different samples the conventional algorithm, the dec our deconvolution algorithm, and the new algorithm sum and multiply. So uh, the optical sectioning uh, is really much better here. And we think that what is really important with this algorithm is that we can uh, obtain this optical sectioning in real time. So for example, here uh, we have uh, the elemental images and we are making refocusing manually with the hand. We are moving the sample. So different part of the 3D sample is now in focus. And here, and here we have optical, optically sexual images in real time. So yeah, of course, we don't have the resolution of a confocal microscope, but this is working really much faster than a confocal, a confocal microscope and works really well for providing optical sectioning in real time with fluorescent samples. And yeah, our last idea was uh, to take profit, profit from this algorithm and to apply it to a situation in which uh, things are quite similar to fluorescent images. So, well, I'm sorry for that. I refer to a dark field uh, architecture. You know, dark field is a, is a microscopy imaging uh, technique that is based in blocking the DC term of diffracted light. So in fact, if we illuminate a sample with a plane wave, we see that just in this point, uh, we have concentrated the DC term of the, of the light of the diffracted light. So in fact, we should, if we are able to block this point, we can make dark field microscopy. And if we put micro lens array, we can make dark field, light field microscopy. So first proposal was to block directly the central part of uh, the central micro lens. Yeah, but the problem is that uh, yeah, there is a lot of concentration of light around here, and we had problems with the dynamic range of the sensor. And um, on the other hand, this uh, uh, okay, this micro lens array should be uh, uh, manufactured for for this task. But why not to make use of the tools that usually are incorporated in? Uh, in good microscopes. So why not to use the illumination ring that is, 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 is usually uh, applied for making dark field microscopy. So you can see that now, in fact, the zero order is not in, at the center of the aperture, but is here at the outer uh, border of the aperture. And if the numerical aperture of illumination and uh, of uh, imaging uh, lens are, are okay, we can block this zero order. And therefore we can obtain here directly the, the light field, uh, okay, the dark field architecture applied to uh, Fourier integral microscopy, Fourier light field microscopy. Okay, this is what we did. In, uh, in our lab, we use this illumination ring. And uh, here we use as the sample, uh, uh, okay, these are, these, are, these are bubbles in a, in a water, in a water uh, uh, atmosphere. These are the, uh, the elemental images obtained uh, with, the, with this dark field mode. You can see that we have bright isolated samples over a dark background. And then we can we could use our algorithms to obtain this. So we were able to have a 
uh, dark field 3D in real time. Or we applied same technique to the, to the, to the zebra fish sample. Uh, again, we have here the elemental images. Of course, uh, the images that are close to the, to the image of the illumination ring are brighter. But uh, okay, this is any of the elemental images. And here is the demonstration that, that we can obtain these images with good resolution, with 3D information, and also in real time. Okay, uh, okay. I would like to say that uh, we have a, uh, yeah, from uh, 19, uh, from 2016, we have made a, I would say a good contribution to the field of, uh, of light, of Fourier light field microscopy. I hope this will be useful for the development of new tools in microscopy. And uh, finally, uh, let me tell you that, okay, based in all this work, uh, two years ago, we created um, and a spin-off, uh, uh, Do It Plan Optic, which is uh, close to, to, to provide to the market this, uh, this, uh, this uh, Plan Optic eyepiece. And okay, uh, you, can, you can have much, uh, much more information about this product in, in, at, at 3 p.m. in the workshop um, made by the, by the company. And okay, I finish, I finish with that. So thank you very much. Uh, let me, uh, okay, this has become, okay, should I finish this? So, so, okay, um, so I think that is, uh, Time for questions. Um, uh, we didn't receive any any question in the in the chat. Uh, so anyway, remember. Remember that um, we have the um, the possibility of having a, a, a debate with uh, any. Uh, any person in the audience interested in the in the in this technology and, and the work that our uh, uh, research group has been developing in the last uh, years uh, in the meet the speakers um, room uh, after next speaker uh, the meet the speaker with uh, Manuel Martinez will be will be open uh, in that moment so um, Maybe, uh, Manolo, you, you can tell us something about uh, which are the requirements that we need in our microscope, in a conventional microscope, to use uh, this kind of uh, ocular device or, um, or I mean, the, this technology needs some special requirement for the illumination of the sample, some special preparation or, or can be used at, uh, in a conventional um, white field microscope or, or do we need something to, to, to move uh, to, to this uh, architecture? So uh, in principle, in principle uh, you need nothing. You only need to remove the eyepiece from the ocular port. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm, 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 I'm talking about, about, the, about the ocular eyepiece, but I can make it. So you can remove uh, the, the, the eyepiece from the ocular port. You can insert the, the, the planoptic eyepiece. And then in, in this case, you obtain immediately and simultaneously several perspectives of the sample. So, so you can use all the facilities of the microscope. So it means that if you want to, if you want to work in a dark field, so you can work in that field. If you want to work in fluorescence, you can work in fluorescence. You, you can use every different different uh, uh, facilities of the of the microscope. In fact, there is only one requirement: is that there's there must be some uh, some uh, matching between the micron array and the aperture stop, because we need to uh, be able to fit within the aperture stop at least. 
uh, a collection of two, but three and two. So we need minimum three perspectives in a in a in a in a, in a direction. So if the, if this doesn't happen, uh, but, but but it happens maybe for ninety percent of the microscope objectives, but not with the one hundred percent. So this is the only requirement, but. Uh, I think there is no 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 additional requirement for making work this uh, technology. Okay, we we received some some questions uh, right now. Uh, Diego Mejías asks, uh, which is the maximum resolution that can be obtained? Yeah, the maximum the maximum maximum resolution we can obtain is the resolution of the original microscope divided by three. So there is, there is a factor three loss in resolution as compared with the conventional microscope. So for example, if you have a microscope and the resolution is 0 0.5 micron, so in our best realization, we can obtain 1.5. In fact, a, a little bit worse, maybe 1.6 in order to, okay, not, not to make the matching uh, so critical. So 3.1, 3.2 uh, factor, this is the maximum resolution we can obtain. It depends on the resolution of the microscope in which you insert our device. Okay, uh, second question by uh, Brand van der Broek um, is, uh, what is the depth that you can reach? I guess that it, it depends on the wavelength that you are using. And, uh, the, uh, the depth, the, the depth. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Of course. If you if you are working with uh, you know with uh, yeah with uh, very compact samples, it depends on on uh, yeah on diffusion of light and so on. But in principle, uh, let let me share one more time. Uh, um, okay. So I think here I have here. So. So in fact, in fact, um, the depth of field of uh, of the FI MIG is uh, is the result of multiplying the depth of field of the conventional microscope in which you insert uh, the device multiplied by n squared. If we are working with n equal to nine, so we we are we can enlarge the depth of field by a factor close to ten. In this case, n is four is a, a factor close to, yeah. to to twenty. Okay, but but this is this is that way. Another problem is that uh, the sample is very compact and you have a problem with uh, light diffusion and so on. Uh, uh, this is something we cannot solve. And uh, there is a, 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 another question. Uh, Sebastian Tosi said that uh -huh. uh, which are the the pros and the cons of this solution as compared to uh, techniques based on interfering waves or holography, holographic microscopy or? Uh, holographic microscopy, uh, I think uh, if you are thinking in, in, uh, in fluorescence, I don't think holographic microscopy is a good idea. So interference microscopy for, for fluorescence, I don't think it's a good idea. Yeah, and, um, and, and anyway, uh, I think that one, Good thing of this is that you, of this technique is that you, you do not need to control the coherence of the illumination. In fact, yeah. you can use a conventional uh, illuminator in, yeah. in a microscope. In, in holography, you need to, to, to take care about the coherence of the illumination. And um, on the other hand, strictly speaking, um, uh, holographic microscopy does not have... Um, optical sectioning capabilities. So this is another thing that, uh, that will, will uh, give some advantage uh, of this. Of course, resolution is a handicap. So this is the main problem yeah, but, in, that, but, in that technique, yeah. Yeah, but, but you know, Genaro, that not, not, not many people is able to get the best resolution in, in, in holographic microscopy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because, yeah. And, and there, there's a lot of, you know, yeah. the, the, the signal to noise yeah. ratio is very low, yeah. typically, and so uh, Yeah, we have some work about this yeah. as well. Um, 
Okay, um, I think that uh, we have to move to the next uh, speaker. So please uh, keep your your uh, questions uh, ready for the meet the speakers meet the speaker after the the, the next um, the next talk. Uh, so thank you very much for your participation in the debate. Anyway, okay, thank so, you very much, Canaro. So. Um,